Hello everybody, I'm Dan. Welcome to my Java tutorial series. Throughout my tutorials I will teach you Java using just Notepad and the command prompt. The order in which my tutorials are organized on both my website at javacjava.com and my YouTube playlist is designed to maximize learning by building on concepts from prior tutorials. This tutorial is an introduction to the Java interface. I'm going to open up my web browser and my website, javacjava.com, select menu and Java OOP tutorials. I'm going to scroll down here to the Introduction to Interfaces tutorial. Prior to Java 8, the purpose of an interface was much easier to explain. A simple statement would just about sum it up. An interface is essentially a 100% abstract class containing only abstract methods and constants. Now in Java 8, the interface underwent a major overhaul. Functionality such as default methods and static methods were introduced. Now, along with the new functionality, multiple inheritance issues arose. As a beginner, all this may sound a little scary, but I'm going to explain the details of interfaces in great depth. However, this initial tutorial will serve as more of an introduction to interfaces as opposed to an explanation of all the rules. It is important to understand the is a relationship that a subclass has with an abstract superclass before learning about interfaces. Now, for example, a Boeing 787 and an FA-18 fighter and the Cessna amphibian all have an ISA relationship with an airplane. A Formula One, Honda Accord, a Toyota Camry all have an ISA relationship with a car. Now, are there some things that a Honda Accord has in common with a Boeing 787? Well, they both have engines and they both carry passengers. Think of the purpose of an interface as having more of an inheritance type and uh, this is something that I've made up, by the way. This isn't actually official, but a contains or contains a or contains an relationship with an object. Whereas an abstract class has more of an inheritance is a or is an type relationship with an object. Now, if, you, if you're familiar with it, you've heard the is a relationship there. There's also a has a, right? And I'm not going to go into the has a now, but contains a is more of a, the relationship that I'm going to go over here. So... Like a Boeing 787 is an airplane, an F-A-18 fighter is an airplane, and a Cessna amphibian is an airplane, right? So airplane is a perfect candidate for being an abstract class. A Formula One racer is a car, a Honda Accord is a car, a Toyota Camry is a car, right? So a car is, is a perfect candidate for being an abstract class. Now a Boeing 87 contains an engine, an F-A-18 contains an engine, and a Cessna Amphibian contains an engine, a Formula One contains an engine, a Honda Accord contains an engine, and a Toyota Camry contains an engine. So an engine is kind of like a, a great candidate to be an interface. <coughs> a Boeing 787 contains passengers. Same with an F-A-18, they contain passengers, maybe only two, just a pilot and a co-pilot, but a Cessna Amphibian contains passengers. Formula One contains, well, a passenger. A Toyota Honda Accord, some passengers, Toyota Camry, right? So passengers is something that um, is perfect for an interface there, right? So, as you can see where a Boeing 787 is an airplane, right? Now a Boeing 787 contains an engine. A Boeing 787 contains passengers, right? The Honda Accord is a car, where the Honda Accord contains an engine, and the Honda Accord contains passengers. So, that's a, an interface is more designed to be shared across diff, various different objects, like stuff that objects will have in common, as opposed to like an abstract class will be like, it's, it's really well defined. Like a, a Boeing 787 is an airplane, a Formula One is a car. Okay, so that's the primary difference between them when you're thinking, um, you know, philosophically there. So let's come down here and highlight all the source code. Okay, control C to copy or right click and select copy. I'm gonna go ahead and move the browser off screen here. Okay, I've got a shortcut to the command prompt on my desktop, but if you don't, you can create one really quick by right clicking, selecting new shortcut, CMD, then next and finish. And open up the command prompt. First thing I want to do is type in Java C, which is a Java compiler, and then dash version. Version will display the version number of the Java compiler. 1.8.0 underscore 45. So that's basically 
The second number is the only thing we're concerned with here, which is Java 8. This is build 45. You'll be running something probably in the future when looking at this tutorial, or maybe even Java 9 or 8 or 10 or who knows. But you want to make sure you have at least Java 8 installed because that's when they introduced all of this stuff there. So in order to, for the tutorials to be compatible here, you'll want to make sure that's the minimum there. Java 7 or Java 6, if it says 1.7, 1.6, you need to make sure you get that upgraded. Um, CLS, well basically, I, and if you don't even see this, if you get an error message, you need to watch my tutorial on installing the Java development kit. Make sure you get that, that installed and configured properly before even continuing. CD space backslash CLS, I'm going to clear the screen. CD space backslash moved us down to the uh, change directory and backslash told it to go, told it to, go to the root. I'm going to make a directory here called Java using the MD command. I already have it, but if you don't, it'll create it for you. Change directories to the Java folder. I'm going to make a directory here called uh, interf uh, interface intro. Change directories to the interface intro. <coughs> Uh, notepad interface intro.java. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and paste all that source code in here. Now, if you if you haven't watched my tutorial on the abstract class, I highly recommend you do that. Um, you know, just like if you look at this and you see abstract class airplane and this makes no sense, you're definitely going to want to watch my abstract um, class tutorial there. And same thing right here. If you look at this right here, Abstract void takeoff, <coughs> which is a. Uh, let me grab some water here. This is an abstract method because it doesn't have a body, right? If it had a code block after it or a body, right, then it wouldn't be an abstract method. And also, of course, it has the abstract modifier too on it. Well, but if this doesn't make any sense to you, then definitely watch my abstract class um, tutorial there. So and anything, everything else abstract I've got on the tutorials. So um, basically I'm, I'm copying over the airplane stuff right from that class there, just recycling the code there. And in this abstract class, um, basically I am declaring an abstract method called take off, right? Because going back to my example, like a 787, right? It needs a really long runway to take off, whereas like um, an FA-18 fighter, it can take up, it's basically launched like a slingshot right off of a, uh, the aircraft carrier. Well, um, that Cessna amphibian, that thing can take off from a lake or water or whatever, you know, so. Uh, various different um, subclasses that inherit my abstract class airplane will, um, you know, do their own unique takeoff methods here. I don't know how they're going to do it. I'm going to leave that up to them, and that's hence exactly what an abstract method is. I also did this abstract class car in here too. It's very similar to the airplane class here. Um, I've got another abstract method in it here called fasten seat belts, right? That'll be different there. Like a Formula One racer might have like a five point seat belt, you know, as opposed to a Honda Accord as an ordinary lap belt. And now I've declared a couple of interface interfaces down here, like engine, right? That's what we said that a 787 has in common with a Honda Accord. Both of them contain an engine. So we use the interface Java keyword here. You know, normally we just have class there, right? But this is an interface. And then we uh, just specify basically an abstract class right here. There's, um, it's actually implicitly abstract right here. So, get fuel type. So, whereas an engine for a 787 will have some fuel, different fuel type than uh, fuel for a Honda Accord. Same thing with max passengers here, too. Um, both of these will be required to be put into uh, both the Honda Accord and the Boeing 787. Okay, so let's come down to the Boeing 787. Before, we didn't have any of this when we were talking about that. We're just extending the airplane abstract superclass here. So we were forced to override the takeoff method because it's abstract up here, right? In the airplane abstract class airplane. Now, we use the key Java keyword implements to um, basically inherit all of the stuff from the engine interface and the passenger's interface. Now we're forced to override these whenever we implement them there. So I have to have the override get fuel type and the override get max passengers type, right? So 
I'm going to be returning fuel type, which is a private string variable up here. And max passengers, I've basically made it the equivalent of constant up here and set that equal to 335. Now the fuel type is being set as a parameter in the constructor there. I'm um, basically passing model and top speed onto the super class there, right? Because up here in the airplane class, it'll go ahead and actually set model and top speed. And then the just the ordinary old method inside of the abstract will display the model and top speed to the console. Okay, so coming back down here, um, uh, fuel type, I'm intercepting fuel type and setting that equal to the instance variable right there, right? And then basically get fuel type and get max passengers are overriding these because I've implemented them and these are abstract methods. Okay, same thing down here in Honda Accord. I had to override the get fuel type and override the get max passengers because I'm implementing engine and passengers, right? I'm inheriting those and I'm forced to override them. Okay, so let's come back up here to the main method here. Uh, well, the interface intro class where I've got the main method entry point and I'm basically creating a new reference variable of Boeing 787 type and passing it, you know, the constructor here. 787, the model, the max speed, and jet fuel. And then I'm invoking its takeoff method or summary method takeoff method and then I'm displaying to the console the engines of a 787 burn and then I'm directly accessing commercial the um, I'm directly invoking the get fuel type method here right and down here a 787 can carry up to commercial and I'm directly invoking the get max passengers here Okay, then down here to the Honda Accord, the uh, Accord reference variable of Honda Accord type, and initializing its constructor with these three arguments here, Accord sedan and unleaded gasoline. Summary fasten seat belts, and then I am displaying the console, the engine of a Honda burns, and then I'm getting the fuel type here, and displaying the max passengers with this string literal plus invoking the get max, max passengers down here. So let's go ahead and save this, come up here and compile it. Let's our screen. Okay, Java to run the Java virtual machine invoking the interface intro class. Okay, so basically, top speed of a 787 is 590. 787 needs a very long runway to take off, right? Um, both the summary and the takeoff here were part of the abstract. Well, the summary was inherited from the abstract class airplane, right? That method was inherited down here on the 787 because we extended airplane. Now, the next method here of takeoff, right? That was a abstract... Um, method here declared in the abstract class airplane. So we had to override that one here and then we're displaying that one right here. We're invoking that. So that's the first two lines here are part of abstract methods, right? Something that would basically be in uh, related directly to an airplane. It's top speed and it's takeoff routine method. Now the next two lines are interface type stuff, right? And the interface will have the engines of a 787 burn jet fuel and a 787 can safely carry up to 335 passengers. Those two methods are directly required because I implemented both the engine and the passengers interfaces here, right? So I had to come down here and override both of those for this particular Boeing 787 class. All right, so then back to the Honda Accord. The, so the Honda Accord is a sedan. Safety first, pull the seat belt over your shoulder and lap it, oh, it's shoulder and lap and click it together. Right, so those two things here up here in the car, right? The summary is just an ordinary method that I inherited when I extended car. And then the abstract fasten seat belts is something I'm forced to implement, right? When I extend car, and that's an abstract class. Now, because I implement the engine and passengers, I have to come down and create those methods too and override them, right? And so basically, the engine of a Honda Accord burns unleaded gasoline. The Honda Accord is designed to safely carry five passengers. All right, so you can see these two lines, this line right here and this line right here, um, 
were directly due because we because I implemented both engine and passenger. Same thing with the uh, Honda Accord class down here. The, this line and this line were part of the implementation of those two um, interfaces. Whereas these guys, this one right up here, was inherited from the abstract class. This one up here was inherited from the abstract class. And this one was an abstract method in the abstract class that I was forced to override. And this one right here, same thing, was an abstract method in the abstract class that I was forced to override. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and close out of that. And basically this should kind of give you like an over, or maybe a the starting idea on the differences between an abstract class and an interface there. But I'm gonna go ahead and move that off screen and leave you with some final thoughts there, so. Basically, this tutorial was an introduction to demonstrate a simple use case of an interface. Now, in my following tutorials, I will cover details. I uh, will cover in detail the rules and capability of interfaces. That concludes this tutorial. Thanks for watching.